So hey guys and gals, um, back again, Doc Lucky's talk, uh, yo-yo talk I should say, <laughs> Be talking too. We've got a different setup tonight. Uh, my cameraman, TriCaster operator and food services and janitorial all wrapped in one. Sean Berg is out. He had a fever the day before yesterday, so we were worried about COVID-19. Fortunately, he checks out A-OK -okay, and he will be back next week. But tonight I am operating this whole entire setup off of this iPad here and uh, we'll see how that goes. This is, I just learned the system literally five hours ago. So it may not be quite as smooth as in the past, but just uh, bear with me. Tonight, we are going to talk about fakes, forgeries, fantasy pieces, counterfeits, reproductions, all kinds of yo-yos that you probably don't want to accidentally get in your collection. It could be worth hundreds or more dollars to you in knowing how to tell the difference between some of these uh, items. And what gives me the right to be here and talking to you about yo-yos? Well, I'm the author of Lucky's Collector's Guide to 20th Century Yo-Yos, and I also have the Guinness World Record for the largest yo-yo collection. So, and I also have a little sign right here that says Yo-Yo Historian. So that must make it true. But as you know, if you've watched other episodes, we have a really nice prize package giveaway near the end of the show, but you have to keep watching to answer the pop quiz. It'll be two questions tonight, and we'll see um, how everybody does. So good luck with you. We'll uh, go and take a look at what our prize package is now. So we've got a great prize package tonight. Our topic for discussion tonight is fakes and fantasy yo-yos and reproductions. I'm not gonna try and pass off any fakes or fantasy pieces on you, but we've got a couple of actually collectible reproductions in here. So it's a good prize package and uh, let's just uh, go through this a bit. Of course, I'm giving away a copy of Lucky's Collector's Guide to 20th Century Yo-Yo and a non-responsive Doc Lucky Yo-Yo. We've got a autographed copy of The Immune, the winner of the 2012 International Book Awards and an Immune Tact Force Yo-Yo, which most of you don't have. Got a nice RB2 here. Uh, these usually sell in around the $20 range right now. A couple nice stealth fires from around 99. Nice string pack there, early Royal Champion yo-yos. Those are fairly common. A nice beginner's yo-yo here. This is a wood from 1965. Gotta have one of those in your collections. Coca-Cola yo-yos. These usually sell in the $10 range right now. Little video from the 2003 World Yo-Yo Contest. This is on DVD. Good cross flags, Duncan, again from 65 on the card. It's in pretty much mini mint condition. Uh, this is a nice yo-yo here. Well, actually a pair of interesting things to talk about. Uh, number one, we have a Sprite yo-yo from the 1987 Brazil. These usually sell for around $30 because it's foreign and there's a lot of Russell yo-yo collectors. These are something that folks like to have in their collection, especially if they're Russell collectors. Then we have right next to it a reproduction yo-yo. This yo-yo was made in 1996, was released. That's a super reproduction by Duncan. The last wood yo-yo with the Duncan company was in 1965. This has exactly the same logo, except if you look close, this is the way you tell them apart, you will see the Duncan has a registered trademark and the yo-yo does not have a registered trademark. So that's how you tell them from the original ones. This is a space returner yo-yo, obviously a knockoff of the satellite type yo-yo. Solid plastic, breaks easily, they have plastic axles, as well as the Monarch Trixer. Mo that is a knockoff of a butterfly, again, breaks very easily. This is a reproduction royal yo-yo, it's the Royal Chevron with jewels. It was produced in 2000, they came in four colors, had a little lucite box they came in. Uh, it was made by Tom Radovan, that's Joe Radovan's son. Joe Radovan was the man behind the Sam? Royal Yo-Yo. There is a number stamped on the back, and this one is signed by Tom Radovan. 
this yo yo actually looks better than the original, but they, they sell in the 10 to $20 range usually when they're up on eBay. This is perhaps the most interesting yo-yo in the prize package. It's a 2002 World Yo-Yo Contest yo-yo. It's wood laser carved. This is the first laser carved yo-yo that Duncan ever did. They only made 50 of them, I believe, as I recall, Steve Brown was behind this. So we've got an interesting selection here in the prize package for the pop quiz tonight, later in the show. Hopefully one of you guys will be the lucky winner. So now we need to calculate the value of our prize package. And it is, wow, $263. So anyway, that's our prize package for the night. It's a pretty good one. That a little bit later when we get to the pop quiz at the end of the show. So tonight I'm going to talk about fakes, reproductions, fantasy pieces, and counterfeits, things like that. And this is a problem for yo-yo collectors because this comes up all the time. Am I getting the real deal or is this something that somebody's trying to slide off on me and, and make an extra buck? So um, take a look at these. These are yo-yos that what I refer to as fantasy pieces and it's the intent of the yo-yo. If the intent is to deceive, then I would consider this to be fakes or uh, forgeries. Now this particular yo-yo here, the little heart-shaped yo-yo, that was made by Hallmark and Hallmark uh, made these blank. There, there are no figures on these yo-yos. So you'll find these like this uh, Kermit the Frog and then the Mickey Mouse with little stickers on them. Now, when I got these, the person was very honest on eBay and said, look, we've put stickers on these. The, these weren't made. These aren't licensed characters or anything like that. There was no intent to deceive. So in that case, this is just a fantasy piece. And I will add, it turns out, I don't know why, but one of the yo-yos in the Smithsonian is a Hallmark heart-shaped yo-yo. No, I, I have no idea why they thought that was worthy to have in the Smithsonian yo-yo collection, but it's it's certainly in there. Now here's a Betty Boop. You can see that was just kind of handcrafted. Again, a fantasy piece, no intent to deceive. Now compare that with these yo-yos here. This is a Gene Autry, oh, I'm sorry, a Hopalong Cassidy yo-yo. This is entirely fake. When this first came out uh, on the, um, uh, on eBay, it was uh, something that went for a couple hundred dollars. The first one went off for $250 and went, wow, what a fine. Of course, they didn't have a really good close up of it, so you really couldn't tell what was there. But then I started looking at the next one that came up, and if it was really found in your grandmother's attic, how did you find two of these? And then you notice how the shiny the brass is. Did that really sit in your grandma's attic for 40, 50, 60 years? No. And then when I finally got one, when the price went down really low so I could examine it, what's, what they've done is this is completely fake. And people spent a lot of money on this particular yo-yo and just been ripped off. This is probably a photocopied seal from a ice cream thing that Hopalong Cassidy really was associated with. This card has been faked in Photoshop. They put a Duncan logo on it. Duncan never made this yo-yo. It makes it look like it was a Duncan yo-yo with this ice cream promotion. But they've pasted and Photoshopped together something that is not real. All this stuff is obviously new. Uh, the little brass piece there for the hanger is bright and shiny new. There is no way this piece is 50, 60 years old or more. So be wary of that one. These still occasionally pop up and I still see people paying 40 and 50 bucks for them. So that's a, a shame. It is a cross collector. So hopefully it's not the yo-yo folks that are doing it. Now here's another one that bugs me. Uh, this is the same deal and probably made by the same people too. This is the same story. I found a yo-yo in an attic of my grandmother's yada, yada, yada. So somebody was out there making these uh, fake yo-yos. Now this one, they've taken the seal off the regular Roy Rogers yo-yo, which is a plastic yo-yo, and put it on a wood yo-yo. Then they photocopied 
some of these things that were on the original Roundup, but it's a plastic, it's the Eagle model for Duncan, which was made in like 1952. So they're, they're promoting this as like early 50s. Again, if you look at the package, shiny, shiny hanger there. There's a staple in it that's brand spanking new. And again, I've seen these yo-yos go off for over $100. People, when they get it, see it for the first time, they think, oh, what a deal. I'll jump right on this. It's a buy it now for $100. i am going to get something nobody else has. It's sad, but um, this is unfortunate that people are out there willing to, to deceive. Now, we get into other, this is a, a nice big one. This, again, is a, a fantasy piece. Now, this one they did advertise as the real thing. It's got a Disney sticker on it. This is a fantasy. This is, not, this is a fake. Uh, they were doing this to drive up the price, and, and that's a very uh, sad thing to do. Now, here's when you get into to weird things. These are Argentinian uh, uh, yo-yos from Argentina. Uh, one is Lost in Space from the 60s version of Lost in Space. The other one is my favorite show as a kid, The Time Tunnel. I mean, I waited for that show every week, and my parents knew if they were going to punish me, the best thing they could do was say, you're not getting to watch The Time Tunnel. So, man, I was always on my best behavior in the less, late 60s because I wanted to watch this show. Now, I don't think that these are uh, made in that time period. I think it was made later. So is it a fake or a forgery? No, it's just a yo-yo that's made. It is authentic, but I'm not seeing the copyright things on it. So it may be a kind of a fantasy piece that they made, but they made a series of it. So it's still kind of semi-collectible. And if you're, you grew up in the 60s and watched these type of shows, uh, you still want to have them in, in your collection. But it's not like it was an original piece made, licensed, branded in the, the 60s. So now we get into what I consider just total fakes. Uh, just these are yo-yos that, that didn't exist. And these are really tough for collectors, especially new collectors. Here is a royal where they have taken uh, either, a, a, I think, a box or something like that, cut a little round circle, taken the lo logo out. It's not even straight. It's just a off-centered logo, and they've just glued it on to, uh, I don't know, it could have been a flyback or whatever. I think if you remove this seal, you'll find some other brand underneath the, 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 the there. So anyway, uh, be careful of that, sticking fake seals on. Here's another thing. Uh, these three yo-yos here are all fantasy pieces. Uh, and, and they're not fantasy pieces, I'm saying they're, they're fake. These never had jewels. This is uh, 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 what would be considered a five-star jewel. This is a real yo-yo. It's a collectible yo-yo, but it never had these rhinestones in it. These were placed aftermarket by somebody who promoted it. And this, this comes from Kissimmee Bob because a lot of these yo-yos that had um, uh, fake jewels, and he would sell them for hundreds of dollars. Uh, this is a fake cross flags. It has four jewels there. That never happened. It was advertised. I'll even talk to collectors and say, well, do you have one of those rare cross flags? I've traced every single one of them back to Kissimmee Bob. Uh, not a fair thing. These did not exist. And one of the ways you can tell is that it, with Duncan, when they produced their jewel yo-yos, they drilled the holes and then they painted the yo-yos. So you will see paint going down into the holes where these, they're drilled after the fact, there's no paint in those holes. And here's another good example of a Royal. Again, this is a Kissimmee Bob version where, and the, the, the jewels or the rhinestones are the wrong size. These are a little bit smaller than what would have happened on an original yo-yo if it ever had this, but this pattern was never actually made. Now here's another one. That's a fake yo-yo meant to deceive. Uh, that's an Elvis yo-yo. Now, if you're an Elvis collector, you might go, wow, this is really great. This is cool. Somebody's just taken a sticker and put it on a cheap tin yo-yo and sold it to try to get extra value by saying it's something that's not. This is definitely not a licensed yo-yo. Now then you get into interesting things like this. You, you guys recognize who that is? Well, I have every president's on a yo-yo back to JFK. 
Uh, I've got from Lyndon Johnson on. They've all had yo-yos. And this is a Trump yo-yo. Now, the interesting thing about this Trump yo-yo is, and if you don't like that version of them, well, then they got the smiling version. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's, it's apolitical. You can show whichever side you want with uh, President Trump here. But anyway, it's a, a cool yo-yo because it's a figural yo-yo. And this one was actually made on one of those 3D printers. So the guy was very honest. He designed it himself. He made them. He's selling them. So it's a fantasy piece. It's not licensed, but it's still kind of collectible. But you can continue to make these things so they'll never have a, a great value. Now, if he destroys the program that makes this, then the value of these would, would certainly go up. Now, here's another piece I call a fantasy uh, piece. And these are two fantasy pieces here. When you take a yo-yo that's real, uh, this is a phantom. This is a BC phantom. Um, and it has carving on it. So you've added artwork onto an uh, original yo-yo. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, there's not, nothing there meant to deceive anybody. Uh, if you like that and somebody actually carved it, and I'm embarrassed, I don't remember who. So if in the comments section, if you happen to be the one that uh, uh, did uh, carve this, uh, please let me know uh, because I'd like to give you full credit for that. But beautiful carving uh, on this yo-yo like the demonstrators used to do back in the, the day. Now this is a Higby yo-yo. This one has a, uh, a painting on the back as his own card, but it is obviously a reproduction of the Duncan Cross flags. There's no intent to deceive here. So this becomes a collectible because if you like Higby's artwork, which I certainly do, I've got a lot of Higby art, this in itself makes it more collectible. So it's a fantasy piece, but it is an art fantasy piece, which is certainly fine. As opposed to this, which even though this is artwork, this is another Higby yo-yo. Let me get it in the screen here. So this is a Higby yo-yo here, but this was made as part of uh, Duncan line. So now it's art. It's not really a fantasy piece because it, piece because it was really run, uh, but it's just a very nice art yo-yo that I tell people that's uh, reasonable to collect. And I love Higby stuff. Now we get into stuff that, uh, well, I'm going to show you a couple what I call forgeries. That's a little bit different from uh, some of the, the fakes where they're adding things to it. And, and sometimes people ask me, well, what about when people paint over a yo-yo? Because that's been showing up on, on eBay some. When you paint over it, if you're removing the original paint where it had a stripe or something like that, you're really creating a new yo-yo. I think that is uh, fake. So uh, I, I, I will not deal with yo-yos that have been repainted or something like that. If they add a original rhinestone, say from another broken yo-yo to one that has fallen out of it, that's, that's a fine repair. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with changing the string, nothing wrong with cleaning up the yo-yo. But when you start adding things that weren't originally there or changing the way the yo-yo looks, then, then that, uh, I think, makes the yo-yo the worthless. This is uh, essentially a counterfeit yo-yo. Somebody got a stamp uh, from the uh, Royal, uh, I'm sorry, this is a uh, goody Filipino twirler. It's an ink stamp. They did a crappy job on it. It's easy to see this is not an original. But they were selling these as like originals, and uh, that's, that's a foul. So don't let that one catch you. This one is, uh, uh, was floating around for a while. You'd see several specimens of this. Somebody got one of the old Flores die stamps and got a bunch of these yo-yos and we're stamping them in and selling them as originals. They are not, do not pay uh, a lot for these, do not sell the farm uh, to get this yo-yo. It, uh, it is a counterfeit yo-yo. And I, I got it so I could show people what a counterfeit yo-yo like this uh, looks like. Now, then we get into things that are called reproductions. And sometimes these are confusing because this is a, a Walmart yo-yo. It's a Walton five and dime. I thought it was an original actually when I was buying it, uh, but it's not. It's a, it's a reproduction and you'll see these things popping up. There's nothing wrong with reproduction yo-yos as long as they're honest about uh, what they're selling. And sometimes if they're identical to the original, it gets really hairy in telling some of these things uh, apart. For instance, here is a reproduction uh, that some of you guys are probably familiar with. This is a Duncan Jeweled yo-yo. 
And uh, the nice thing is, with this one, is that it's almost like the original, but there's a couple things. Number one, it all, they all have a number on the back. So that's nice. So you just flip over, if you see a black, they call them black beauty. If you see a black jewel yo-yo, flip it over. If they're telling you it's original and has a number stamped in it, it's not. It's, it's the reproduction. It also says vintage on there. And I would like to take a little bit of credit for that because when they were making this reproduction yo-yo, they did not have a yo-yo to base it off of. So they asked me for the yo-yo and I said, look, if you put this yo-yo out and make it look almost identical to the original, it's gonna drop the value down for all the collectors that have this in their collection. So I said, why don't you put vintage on there? And they said, well, if you let us borrow the yo-yo, we'll do that. So I had a little bit of something to do uh, to say with this and uh, it turned out a beautiful yo-yo, nice collectible now too. And uh, certainly fine to have in your collection, but this is different from the original. Now here is a different type of reproduction. This is a um, original lightning. And I was talking to Sean, Sean's saying, well, obviously this is the good one and this is the bad one. I said, no, the originals have sold for over a thousand dollars in some cases where this one is actually pretty good. It, it can sell for a couple hundred dollars. Beautiful reproduction by the Franklin Mint of the uh, Duncan Lightning. Uh, arguably a better looking yo-yo than the original yo-yo. No intent to deceive. I don't think anybody would have any trouble telling the reproduction uh, apart from the original. So those are the things that I wanted to talk to you about tonight on the reproductions and, and originals and things like that. So now we get into my favorite part of the show where I go into the auctions and look at some of the uh, hot auctions uh, of, the, um, of the week. Doc Lucky's Flaming Hot Auction Picks of the Week. Number three, hot pick of the week. All right, so this first auction, uh, and, and, and let me preface this by saying, when I look at these auctions in my top three picks for the week, it, it's not necessarily the most expensive, it's not necessarily the biggest deal, it's not necessarily the most interesting, it's just kind of a combination of those. It's something that catches my eye that I, I think that in the yo-yo collecting world that we, we need to, to talk about. So this first yo-yo, it's, it's, it's been up before, um, on, on auction. This is a Bosco, uh, uh, th uh, I think they call it a three food drink. If, if you were um, a, a kid in the um, uh, 50s and 60s, this was a, a chocolate drink that was sold. And the interesting thing about this yo-yo is that this, uh, the slogan, the, the three foods in one, they used that prior to 1941. So this yo-yo is probably from the 30s. There's a Bosco Bear yo-yo that was made later in the 60s by Duncan. So this is actually a, a pretty early yo-yo. Somebody was saying at one point that they thought this was a Bandalore, meaning made before 1928. But definitely not. They made the Bosco syrup uh, starting in 1928. So this would be considered a yo-yo, but a yo-yo that was uh, preceded uh, World War uh, uh, two. So nice one to have in your collection. I think this one was uh, selling at around uh, 15 bucks. Yeah. And, th and that's what they usually sell for in better condition than it. So it's my number three. Pick. Number two, hot pick of the week. So this is my uh, pick number two. Uh, this is a Dynaglow top. Now, this is a really cool yo-yo because it uh, was the very first yo-yo that had the glow plastic in it. And um, everybody needs one of these in their collection. Now, there's also a Dynaglow skill toy, but the interesting thing about this one is that this is on the card, and I've actually only seen one other on the card. Now, Here's the problem I don't like about this. This was made in 1952, so it's, a, um, it's an early yo-yo here. So the, the Dynaglow, they have it on sale for $299, which is uh, uh, a pretty penny to pay for this yo-yo, even though it's the very first glow plastic yo-yo out there. 
So I've seen it before. The highest price that, uh, I've seen it actually sell on the card is 30 bucks, which is actually less than sometimes it sells individually. Now, the interesting thing is over the last year, several of them have popped up on eBay and they're going for about 12, 15 bucks. So interesting card, interesting yo-yo to have in your collection, but I certainly wouldn't pay nearly $300 for this uh, yo-yo. Number one, hot pick of the week. Okay, this is my pick of the week. And uh, the reason it's my pick of the week is that if you're watching close on our prize package, this yo-yo is in the prize package. And it's on sale right now for $59.99. Uh, for so now I don't know if it's now, check this box out here as, as it's going by. The box is from the re-release of the Duncan 1955 Super. So that's not the box this came in. I was there uh, at that Worlds when this yo-yo was out. And like I said, this is the first laser card yo-yo. They only made 50 of them. So that's not a, un, uh, not a unreasonable price, I think, for the yo-yo. Uh, Yo-yos from that uh, era uh, go for about that price range. Now, I'm looking at like freehand zeros, and do I value this as much as a freehand zero? No, but it does have an interesting history because it is the first laser card Duncan yo-yo. So that's why it's my number one pick because it's actually in our giveaway tonight. So hopefully you will uh, get that and uh, 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 be worth $60 to you anyway as part of the prize uh, package. Now it's time for our dog of the week. Nasty, nasty dog of the day. All right, this is our dog of the week. And again, for the second week running, we have a whistling tin yo-yo. Now, why people can throw this stuff up and think people are going to buy it, this yo-yo has a price tag of $58. Now, there's no seal on it. It's got rust on it. It's all beat up. Uh, this is what I call a NWP yo-yo. NWP yo-yos are not worth the postage. Except in this case, it's still true even though the postage is free on this. They want $58 for it. And I always like to explain to yo-yo collectors, no matter what the yo-yo is, it could be a Flores, if it doesn't have its seal, it's not worth anything. The seal is everything when collecting a yo-yo. It's just like if you're a, a, a coin collector. If you had a 1909 SVDB, and if you collect coins, you'll know what that is. That's one of the, the rarest of the Lincoln cents. That coin sells for $1,000 now, just in good condition. So what's a 1909 SVDB Lincoln cent worth without that mint mark? One cent. So that's the way you need to think of yo-yos when you're uh, looking at them and looking at the seal. Uh, make sure it has a seal because really that's where the value uh, of the yo-yo comes in. So now we are about ready for our quiz of the day. I know everybody's been waiting patiently for that. That prize package we showed earlier, which was... Uh, uh, several hundred dollars. I can't remember the, the exact amount. I'm not even sure it popped up, but we are going to jump right into our Doc Lucky's Pop Quiz. One shot, one champion. First, to answer both questions in the Facebook comments wins. Get ready. Okay, the Duke Duncan, Duncan Reproduction Black Jewel Vintage Wood Yo-Yo was released in what year? You have to guess on that one. And the second question is, this is a fake three jewel cross flag wood tournament. How many jewels did the original cross flags have? And I'm looking at... Okay, uh, we got a couple here. 
flags how many jewels were in across flags still looking for that right answer how many jewels did the original cross flag tournament have and what year was the release of the reproduction Duncan jeweled yo-yo still waiting for that answer you must answer both in the same comment both in the both in the same comment. So far, I don't think anybody's hit the right year, and certainly nobody's hit the right, oh, wait a minute. Somebody has hit the right jewel count. Getting close. Oh, no, we're still working on it, still working on it. I will give you a little hint. The yo-yos were released in the 90s. Yo yo's were released in the 90s. Get oh, we got it. Ready. Grande Klaus, you are the winner. Good job. 1999 was the reproduction release of the Duncan Jewel, the vintage. And there were no jewels in the original cross flag tournament. That's why I say it was a trick question. There were no jewels. That was a fake one. And the one I showed you earlier was also a fake one, which we talked about and mentioned. So, congratulations, Grande. The uh, answer was 1999, no jewels. I will get you this super prize package. I want everybody to watch next week. Next week is. Oh, next week we're going to have an interesting show. We're going to talk about yo-yo as a Filipino weapon. Was it or not? A real huge controversy in the yo-yo community. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate you uh, taking